Legend of Glue Man, told by Unknown. A Star Stable Ghost Story, part of the Soul Riders series, written by Helena Dahlgren. Have you heard the story of Glue Man? Many people dismiss it as an urban legend, a campfire tale to share on a starry night, or maybe up in the hayloft in the stable after darkness falls and all of the adults have gone home. You shiver, you laugh, and then you forget. A made-up ghost story, that's all, nothing more. But they're wrong. I know, because I met him myself. And I was never the same again. But enough about me now. Do you have a minute? Wouldn't you like to come to the stables with me? It's such a beautiful evening, isn't it? The sky glows in the colors of the rainbow, and even though we're well into fall, the air is still warm. Warm, brilliantly colored sunsets can sometimes give way to a cold blue moonlight later. We can only hope that doesn't happen tonight. All right, come on now. Do you see the horses grazing out in the paddock? They're star breeds, the most beautiful and special breed of horse in Jorvik. Like the island itself, they shine a little brighter. Give that little extra something that distinguishes the truly amazing from the mundane. I had a star breed myself once upon a time. Her name was Moonbeam, and she was the most beautiful horse I have ever seen. For one long summer, it was just her and me. It felt like an eternity. We galloped through sunny clearings, jumped over ditches, and swam in cold little woodland pools, my Moonbeam and me. It was like a fairy tale. Surely too good to be true, but what did I know back then? I was so young. I didn't know any better. I didn't have the sense to understand that all fairy tales come to an end. My horse's white coat gleamed in the sun. I could tell her anything, talk about my sorrows and disappointments, about everyday life and my hopes. Moonbeam was my best friend. And I had never heard of Glue Man. The first time I heard his name, it was in passing, as we stood in the stalls grooming our horses. A friend from the stables joked that we needed to make sure we locked the stable door properly behind us when we left, because otherwise Glue Man could get in. Glue Man, I said, picking up Moonbeam's hoof to clean it. I can't claim that anything in particular happened when I heard his name. So far, we were just joking around. My friend's voice was light and cheerful when she responded. Yeah, haven't you heard of him? Said the girl grooming the big chestnut in the stall next to me. They say he comes here when the moon spreads a particular bluish light. Then the stable door absolutely has to be locked. Ah, that's just something people say to scare us, her friend exclaimed from the stall on my other side. Like in the old days, when people scared their kids by telling stories about water spirits and forest nymphs, so they wouldn't go down to the water and drown or get lost in the woods. I know a girl who's seen Glue Man. Suddenly, the voice of the girl grooming her horse took on a darker tone. She hasn't ever dared to come back to the stables since. Stop trying to scare us, the other girl said. I have to ride my bike home all by myself in a couple minutes. We changed topics. Glue Man receded back into the shadows. I didn't give him another thought. Not until I was alone in the stable another night, after everyone else had gone home. It was my job to lock up when I left, but I didn't want to leave, not yet. I took my time grooming Moonbeam. Her muzzle was so soft on my hand that night. I remember how I leaned my forehead against hers, inhaling the scent of freshly groomed horse. It will always be the two of us, Moonbeam, I whispered. 
Her eyes were as soft as velvet when she looked at me. And I saw only love in her eyes. I suppose that's why we love our horses so tremendously much. In the world, there's worry, grief, and uncertainty. In horses, there's only love. I was so tired. We had spent the whole day riding in the woods, under a broiling sun that left me feeling lethargic and strange. Yes, I was tired, but that's no excuse. I'll never forgive myself for what happened next. Actually, I could have stayed inside Moonbeam's stall and rested there for a little while. It wouldn't have been the first time. But I needed to clean her snaffle before I could sleep. So, reluctantly, I left my horse and went to the tack room. Soon I was absorbed in my work. The scent of saddle soap and hay was comforting in my solitude. And I knew that Moonbeam was nearby and waiting for me to come say goodnight. Once my work was done, I was suddenly filled with doubt. Had I locked the stable door when the others went home? I scratched my head. My whole body felt tired and heavy. I probably wouldn't have the strength to go home tonight and would end up getting some sleep in the hay a little later, once I had pet Moonbeam and made sure she was all set. Oh, to lie down in the soft, aromatic hay and drift off to sleep. The moonlight shone in the window, cold and sharp. My whole body was cast in a blue glow. The light was striking that night. Waxy, chilly, inhospitable. No, I thought. I'm not going home. I'll stay here. And yes, I locked the stable door, didn't I? You see, I was a worrier, afraid of making mistakes, but I was also so awfully tired. The bluish moonlight hypnotized me, made me slip into a strange half-slumber right where I stood. It was the sound of drips that woke me from my trance. Drip, drop, drip, drop. I was suddenly struck by a strange feeling that I was being watched. Although who could it be? I was the last one there in the stable. Everyone else had gone home. Something creaked outside the door to the tack room. Odd noises are normal in a stable as old as this one. Even so, there was something about this particular sound that made the hair on my arms stand up. That same sound could be heard inside the tack room now, too. The same weird dripping sound. Not water exactly, but something else, something more viscous. I took a tentative step forward. There was something on the floor. Whatever it was, it felt really sticky under my boot, like glue. My riding boot was stuck to the floor. I stared down at the puddle and saw how quickly it was spreading. And I saw my own reflection in it. And wasn't I seeing something else as well? Drop. Something sticky landed on my shoulder. Slowly, I turned to look up, to see where it was dripping from. That's when I saw him. Glue Man. I realized it had to be him. Like a distorted black shadow, he hung from the roof. His presence was like a sinkhole, like the disgusting glue that was holding me in place. Again, I tried to move out of the sticky puddle. It didn't work. Then I heard it, a desperate whinnying that echoed through the aisles of the stable and broke my heart. I could tell right away who it was. Oh, sweetie, Moonbeam, I have to get to Moonbeam before Glue Man gets her. I remember that's what I was thinking. I screamed and screamed until my throat hurt. Then I saw Glue Man moving out of the tack room, limping and jerky, as if he too had also gotten stuck in glue and was having trouble walking. Slowly, slowly, the dark figure turned around. And where his face should have been, there was only more darkness. I flat out screamed. 
And then I heard my horse's shrill cry. My moonbeam! My beautiful, beautiful horse! The sound of her hooves echoed within me. I heard how she resisted, trying to stand her ground. I'm coming, sweetie! I cried through my tears, yanking my feet out of my boots. I'm coming! I'll save you! But even my bare feet stuck firmly in the glue. And when I fell to the floor, I could not get back up. Panic made me claw wildly around. I couldn't breathe. Then it went dark. And I don't remember anything else. But when I stood up, the moonlight was gone. And Moonbeam's stall was empty, apart from a few sticky spots in the straw. I never saw my beautiful horse again. Many years have gone by since that fateful night, but I still think about her. I hope she didn't suffer. Hope that Glue Man showed her some type of mercy at the very end. So now it's my turn to warn you. If only I had listened to my friend that night. Oh, everything would have been different. Please, you have to believe me. Glue Man is real. And now he's after your horse. Don't you see how the moonlight falls, cold and blue? Over there, right by the window. That's a bad sign, believe me. Oh, my stars, you have to believe me. No one knows exactly when he'll turn up. But they say that a strange song begins to echo through the stable right before Glue Man comes and knocks on the stable door. Right then, a young girl appears, usually in the tack room. She stands there, completely still, and sings a sort of incantation. For you see, there are a couple of things you can do to keep Glue Man from coming and taking your horse away from you. One, Lock the stable door. That's the one I forgot to do. Never make the mistake I did. Two, go and hide in the hayloft. Hay is protective. He can't find you there. Three, whatever you do, don't go to sleep. Because that's when he comes. Wait, listen. Do you hear the song now? Its power is growing stronger and stronger, isn't it? Echoing through the deserted stable aisle. And isn't it getting closer, too? You locked the stable door, didn't you? Please say that you did. Come on, come with me. We have to get out of here before Glue Man comes. I know a way out. Your hand is so cold, my friend. Oh, and you're shaking. You're not afraid of ghosts, are you? Ah, uh, that makes perfect sense. I was too, back when I was still alive. You have listened to The Legend of Glue Man, told by Unknown. A Star Stable Soul Rider's Ghost Story, written by Helena Dahlgren. Translated by Tara F. Chase. Read and produced by me, Jennifer Jill Araya. Music and sound design by Moa Lendgren. Text, music, and production copyright 2021 by Star Stable Entertainment.